Hi there. This is Dr. Bill White again, and I'm with the American Orthodontic Society, of course, and uh, I'm going to talk to you a little bit today about making retainers using the Biostar. Now, we use the Biostar primarily to make the base for splints, but you can make a real neat retainer with them also if you wanted to, but it kind of messes up the model. So you need a model of exactly how you were when you started. So you may want to take two models uh, if you start off because you, one you're going to make on the Biostar, you have to cut it up to get it out of the Biostar trim it. I'll show you that uh, here in a few pictures in a little bit. Uh, here is the Biostar. It's a wonderful machine and it uh, you put your model and you have the model made here with the arch wires on it and in here you put it down with these little lead pellets around it and then up here you, you've got a heater and you run this vinyl piece over there and you heat it real, get it quite soft and then you suck it down on there or force it down with air pressure and it really fits. I mean, it fits like a glove on there. So anyway, uh, this is a Bi-Star. I'm trying to show you exactly what it is. It works great for splints, and uh, you can make retainers with them also. Uh, here is the uh, lead pellets that you have to put that model in there and put these pellets around on everything. You don't want the uh, vinyl to uh, cover over. And then you have to add, I'm show you again here, you sticky wax your frame, your wire that you're going to have. And this is a, an 036 wire, round stainless steel wire you put in there. Now this part's going to be left open right here. And you're going to have your little vinyl deal will be stuck on this part going all the way around to this over here you have to put this monitor on it uh, too I'll show you that in just a second here now this is the monitor kind of mixed up uh, you mix a powder and liquid and you flow that monitor around the wire that's going to be joined to the vinyl uh, and the rest of it you're going to cut away anyway so uh, the monitor is back there at the front let me Go back to that picture. Uh, here is this uh, monomer, and this is the powder, and you mix those two together, and you you have to paint them on this uh, uh, a wire that's exposed in there. Monomer. Uh, okay. We've taken it and put the monomer now. It flows all under the wire and around the wire. And then the vinyl will uh, join with the monitor and just become kind of one. This is the monitor mixed with the liquid and uh, powder. And you put that on the wire. Okay. Now we put this vinyl up there and you heat it. And then you suck it down onto the model. And it, it joins onto it like mad. Now... After you suck that down and it's hard and a little cooled off, you can take it and try to get your model out, but your model isn't going to come out very, very good. So you take a, they like have a special burr. You go around and you cut the edges and cut this thing loose. There's a lot more work for these retainers than the others, you see. And you can cut that out and you cut the rest of it in front where you're going to leave this clear plastic front on that and it fits those teeth like a glove up there so we cut that thing out and then you get it completely out away from that here it is now you've got to go around and polish all that up smooth it up and everything there's a lot of extra work in making one of these and we call them a <coughs> kind of an invisible retainer it's not invisible but it has a clear plastic front i'll show you 
we made one here for uh, Tricia, one of the young ladies, been working with me for about 40 some odd years. <laughs> and uh, this is the thing after it's made, but this, this clear part fits in front of the teeth, the rest of it fits in, and you trim it up, and this wire is embedded into that vinyl all the way around here, see, and it's embedded in it over here. But these can break out here if you, they're a little more fragile. People have to take care of them very carefully. Now there's the looking at it. it it's nice, and you. Uh, this is the part where you painted the monomer in here, and then the vinyl is united with that. You don't even see it, but that's wire is embedded now into the vinyl and then this is the clear front part of the retainer uh, and that's the way the thing looks so you have to be very careful if you've got one of these if you like to wear them now you don't this is on that blue cloth and it looks you can't see it too much this is the wire course that's embedded this is the old three six wire right there uh, that heavy wire coming out on the side. Now this right here is where it's real fragile. So you have to be careful with that. But man, it fits your teeth like man. Your teeth can't rotate in that at all. Now <clears throat> here it is uh, in her mouth. This is one we made there for Tricia. And this is fitting in her mouth. And I'll show you too. She, she's smiling with it a minute here. And it's a little thicker. Now, this one, the retainer's raised up above so you can kind of see the difference in it. Uh, all right, there it is in her mouth. And you can see what you, it fits right over the teeth. And when you smile, if you're off at a little distance, then people don't see see the thing but it is visible uh, now it's possible if you want to move a tooth just a little bit up here or something change it slightly you can cut it loose but then you have to rebuild the tissue like it was uh, back around the teeth and wax it in and get it set then you can draw this thing down on it and it'll you can wear it, it'll make these teeth a little bit sore, but it'll move the other teeth a small distance. You don't want to try to move anything very far with it uh, like that. And uh, you can make uh, upper retainer, see, and it will fit down. It, when you go down there, it doesn't melt the wax, you see. It's just, uh, it hits there and forms, and now you may have to adjust this on the lingual side a little bit in this area, but it's it'll it'll work. You can move a tooth a little bit with it. Now here, just in the holding it in her hand. And now this is a regular retainer that you can make with it, and you just cut the whole, you just cut the inside out of it. It's more trouble than taking the uh, triad material and just pushing it down on the teeth and cut it off while it's soft and then cure it in there. It's much simpler to make one with a triad and that's what we made all, there's virtually all of our retainers with that. But this is an upper and lower retainer and we never run anything under the tooth. Now if you think you can't get these things to stay up, that's a mistake. I can put little wedges of com a real good composite on the tooth, rather something like that, you know, and you can fix these things where you can't take them out hardly. We can put them in where they lock in there, but they don't need all that. The, the tissue will settle after you seat these things and they wear them for a day or two, the tissue settles and forms a vacuum up in the upper part of the mouth, and those things just stay in fine. You don't have to have any kind of clasp going under it. 
and you don't want that because you want the teeth to erupt into each other and kind of wear in and that's where the final movement is if you have something in between the teeth they will come down and hit that and while they're wearing the retainer the teeth move one way when they take the retainer out they move back the other way and it's back and forth back and forth back and forth and that is wrong we do not need these clasp on retainers now you just may think that's a bunch of bull but you don't have to have the clasp to hold retainers in. If you have a wraparound wire on them, you can fix them where they stay and they lock in. You have to take one side out and then lift it out on the other side. They can fix them. You can't hardly get them out if you want them that way. Now, this is a lower retainer, too, which we usually don't make, but they're good. If you've sprayed, if you've expanded the lower arch a lot, and your face is going to try to go back on you. Now this is a extraction case. You see, there's one of the bicuspids is missing in here, and uh, they don't have wisdom teeth in it, so there's four teeth out of this arch right here. And uh, this is the this is made with that vinyl bistar, but that's a lot of extra work. You can just build this same retainer with that triad stuff and you save your model and it's just so much less work and they're just as good and then you you add this one has the bite plate on it you want to put these bite plates on anything with a deep bite when you start in fact it's better on this every retainer so we put bite plates on virtually all of them now the bottom uh, retainer if you're doing it with the triad, or if you're doing it with a monitor, you have to, I mean the biostar, you'll have to um, cover this underneath here with that monitor, um, monomer, and uh, uh, that's just a lot more trouble. So I would always build them with a, uh, the triad. And you take the triad and you put a little bit of it down around the teeth like this, just a little strip of it and now you come on top of that and put another strip and you just make it where you want it and kind of smooth it out and then you go ahead and harden it with a light and take it out and polish it a little bit you see like that now this outer bow ought to be fitting on the surface of the teeth and I do not like flat wires on this part because the tooth surface is usually sloped and the blooming wire will be like that and you'll have a spot that touches hard and then this doesn't touch I'd just as soon have a flat I mean a round wire fit in there and then you don't have to worry about it you try to keep that right up against the surface of the tooth right in here when you bend in that wire and keep it up against the surface this is an expansion and contraction loop. If you want to tighten it up a little, you just make that bend it smaller. It'll pull it up, tighten it up. So, hope you learn a little bit from uh, this. This is uh, one way to make retainers. But the Bi-Star is basically made for the base of splints. That's where it works really good. Now, here's that. Uh, wire for your lower retainer you build the inside wire and you solder them somewhere back in here see where you lap the two together and you bend the outside wire coming in like that I uh, really would like to have a heavier wire coming around this way on them and then have a lighter wire coming around that portion but uh, you just build the wire it goes all the way around you got to solder it together and usually you make them in uh, three pieces, you see. Now this is one that's been pulled down. And after we have ground it off, the, the model looks bad. But here the retainer is, you see. And this is good if you've extracted something or you closed the big space and you're afraid these are going to try to open up on you a little bit. You 
you can uh, I usually close the space and wait for a couple of months until it you get the roots really up there where you're going to go with them you know and and uh, they're not going to try to back up on your usage tree they're going to drift in this direction and close the space but we can build lower retainers too and uh, sometimes we make a lower retainer and we put a bonded three to three in there and to start with and then make the lower retainer just on the outside of the bonded three to three uh, there's a lot of different things you do in retention depending on what you get want to get done so there it is from another angle and another angle you can see where you solder the joint right in here on it except this this won't even have to be soldered. This is in the acrylic and the, or the vinyl, and you can just build it without any solder joint if you want to. It's a little shaky though. If this cracks apart, uh, it may break. It's probably better if it was soldered. Uh, okay, that's the end of this video, and I hope you watch it and I hope you learn from it. It's just as easy to build these retainers out of. It's easier really and just as good to build it out of these triad sheets of acrylic that you light harden and they last for years. I've had people that have worn them for 30 years and come in with them but most of the time they'll have another one made down the line but you want a model of just how the teeth were when you made it, how your retainer was, and your retainer fits on there. So we always save that model we made the retainer on. If somebody comes in and says the retainer doesn't fit, you don't even look at it in their mouth. Just say, let me see the retainer, and you show them this model. This is the model. Here's the date and everything when we made it. That's what the retainer was made on. Let's see if it fits. You drop it on that model. The darn thing fits like a glove. Then you don't have to tell them, well, you haven't been wearing the blooming thing, you know, uh, or it wouldn't have moved like this. So it's moved. And now if you go back and put it in and kind of force wear it in a few days or a week or more, it will move the teeth back. It'll make them sore some, but it'll move the teeth back virtually where they were. I've had some, you know, they'd leave their tainted grandmothers for a, a week or two, and their teeth moved, and they got their retainer and they said, oh, God, it doesn't fit. If you just put that thing in and keep wearing it, it will bring them back by a, a lot of places where they've moved way off. Uh, if you can get it in and wear it. So hope you enjoy this video and we'll close this thing down now and uh, stop it.